law school area, I know in Boise, you know, pretty well set up. But in law school, is there any place where you can donate things that could be used, like even trucks to help transport things or household stuff or whatever that goes to you rather than to, um, well, you know, there's that whole street on, uh, in Boise that they, you know, people, Turning things to be, you know, like ranch, the uh -huh. mm -hmm. awesome things. But is there any place here in our area? Spokane is the closest place. Okay, and where do you do that? It, it, uh, World uh, Relief in Spokane has uh, their offices and donation center. And so you can go there and drop things off. They have an office, they have a warehouse, and they, they take donations. Um, but you have to take it, it there. <laughs> so okay, they never send a truck or anything. Uh, I, I suppose they might if we had a lot of stuff. Um, but for smaller amounts, no. In fact, I'm going up Tuesday to take a lot of stuff. Today. So I haven't had a chance to do it yet. So I have a, a carload of things that I'm taking up and I'm doing it Tuesday morning. But, what kind of things do they want? Uh, well, right now they were asking for blankets and cleaning supplies. And so I have a bunch of that that have been donated, and plus as well as cash. And so I'm dropping some cash on for them. But so they take donations, and I know you do that, but Boise is a lot further away, yes, so it's more yes. difficult for us to get there. But so. I think with the change in the weather, probably jackets and warm clothing, mm -hmm. especially with the clients that they are coming from uh, Africa. Yeah, they need to be nice. <coughs> stay warm. You know, like the Russell Pullman area, or the Boston Carson area, someplace that we. You know, we need somebody to have um, even a group a warehouse room. I mean, you know, in other words, like any of these places that you can store things, if somebody would pay, you know, by the month to, to have a, a location, the people could, I don't know. Yeah, no, I think that would be a great idea. We just need a group that would be able to take that on and then collect it and then transport, it, transport it up to them. Because people, it's pretty hard to bring a few items or, you know, you don't have yeah. a vehicle that can take a piece of the furniture. Yeah, and that's, and that's why they don't yeah. come down here often because I know. it costs it's them easy. money and yeah. they need their money for other things. And, so. and also, um, with a number of arrivals right now, I would suggest if you are planning to donate the things to actually contact the board relief in Spokane, because I know with arrivals, we did not have any in June. We had one in July, two in August, and two in September. And usually, summer months are our busiest months. But this year, because of the 120 days ban on refugee um, arrivals and everything is so it would be best to call them and yeah. just see what they need and what you can do. Thank you. Yes, you uh, What's the process for getting citizenship uh, for refugees? For refugees. Right. Um, every refugee is eligible to apply for green card after one year, physically 365 days in this country. Um, and then, after four years and nine months, they can apply for citizenship, but they um, have to go through the process. They have to know the test, pass the test, pass. Um, they need to have a proof of the last at least three years of paying taxes. They um, need to have a clean record. That means um, I think for traffic tickets and for misdemeanor um, things, there is still a chance that somebody can get uh, citizenship, but for bigger offenses, they don't. So what would happen then if they get a problem? They are denied citizenship in a case that um, they actually get they, uh, they can be deported. Yeah. Just, isn't there a limit on how long you have a green card before? Uh, green card.
one is usually 10 years, um, but for the citizenship, everybody after five years can apply for four years and nine months to start the process, but in a case that somebody has any kind of um, crimes that they did that actually is felony, they, after 10 years, even if they want to renew their green card or when they apply for citizenship, they run the possibility to be deported. Because they, every refugee needs actually to prove to um, have a good moral character in order to pass the citizenship. Yes? So, do, you said that people like try to get into apartments. Do a lot of people end up staying with people in the community and like how long is that? Oh, that's <laughs> um, actually a very hot question right now. We, um, in the past, we were able to pay deposit and um, pay application fees for families and then when the family arrives we will take them to sign the lease and prove uh, with their documents that they are legal and everything. Right now, um, in most instances, first we are not able to apply because um, as I said, the prices of apartments um, extremely higher than it used to be. Um, most of our requirements for renting an apartment is uh, you have to have a two and a half time uh, rent, your monthly income, that with uh, cash assistance is very um, rarely we can actually prove that. Um, we have a few called um, transitional housing. It's actually uh, people that they are renting their homes for a smaller price than uh, being in hotel. Or we place the family in hotel until we are able to process all their documents and find the apartment. Or if they have relatives in order to save that first portion of the money. Um, because it's usually spent for the first rent and deposit and everything. Um, they stay with relatives. We are hoping, um, we actually have a one group of people that they are helping with transitional housing. Um, but the timing was not good because right now they have housing, we don't have rights. <laughs> Are, are there any obstacles to your agency working with local churches to like sponsor somebody and provide housing, for example? Um, in the past, actually, we had one of apartments that was donated um, by the church. Um, right now, even though We don't have actually that was not anymore. Uh, I'm not sure why. We work with so many um, churches. As I said, um, LDS Church is phenomenal. They help. They actually donated a truck to the agency because the previous one died, and um, it's just there. I honestly think there there no so much um, opportunity for apartments because. Vacancy rate is very, very small, and now it's a market different than the North for us. Obstacles. You're able to work with anybody you want to in the community. <laughs> Do you? Okay, when you call for apartments, um, usually what apartment complex managers will tell you, or they don't have vacancies, or if they have that requirement of two and a half times um, rent for monthly income, we cannot qualify. I think to answer your question, um, there are a lot of different churches that will donate to them and they are allowed to accept those donations. Correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Questions? Yes. I guess I have a question for you, Ken. Um, is there a um, website or something where you announce these? 
I, I didn't know anything about these events. I got to come last week as a friend um, talk about it. And, uh, no, <laughs> we've been doing, I mean, a lot of the stuff we do, uh, either through people's listservs, that, uh, members and people we know that send it out to groups, or we put it on Facebook. It's and, on your calendar, like you go to... Yeah, and then we I have the city calendar. Yeah, 1912 calendar, yeah, 12 calendar. Yeah. the city has a calendar, calendar, those kind of things, but you have to look at the for it. But I also, I'm taking emails, and I'm creating an email list uh, that I will just send out as a listserv just to send out announcements on events. And I'm putting that together now. I have quite a few emails and I'm putting them all together. And so then I would, when some type of event is coming up like this, I would just send out a mass email <laughs> to everybody that's on the list. And that's the only time you would use it, is just to send out that announcement. So, so it, yeah, if you want to leave me here, I didn't bring the pad with me tonight. I, we, or somewhere else, <laughs> uh, but I can take your name and email and I can put you on the list. And then for upcoming events of uh, different types that deal with human rights, I will send I send them out the email. The local papers have done a great job. Lately, they have. The Daily News has done a wonderful job. And then MM 360 did a big full page article. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there have been times when that hasn't happened, but, but lately they've been it. doing a really good job of announcing all the events going on. But yeah, we do need to try to you know, but we just have to really like that besides Facebook. So. We have one more question. Um, what is your suggestion if uh, I wanted to like get to know our some refugees because we don't speak the same language, so what would be your suggestion of how to make friends with them despite that barrier? Um, usually I think if you're ready to have friends from different country, um, just try, believe me, we talk at our agency with our hands, with uh, pictures, but eventually, especially with the younger um, people, you guys learn language so fast, that means, yeah, <laughs> my generation or all that they have a problem with the younger ones, just um, be a friend and be accepted and, you know, start conversation. Most of them are very shy. They are not sure how they are going to be accepted. But they are very, very great people. Thank you. Um, yes. Do you try to uh, find, find um, work in, in primarily Boise area? Or do you yes. go to other areas of the state of jobs? Do, do employers approach you, I guess, say, from others of the state, saying, well, you know, we might have work, or, or does it not happen, or is it just pretty much Boise? Right now, it's Boise because it's still a very good um, job market. But in a time when the recession happened, actually, we worked, there was a dairy company in Oregon that we worked very closely for probably three, four years where one member of the family would actually go there and live and earn the income for the family. But the rest of the family would stay in Boise. Yes. Thank Art. you so much. Thank you.